So after a long, hard ride yesterday in the rain, I ended up here at this very nice and extremely modern hostel in Belgium. I'm taking the train out to Brussels tomorrow. Uh, should be a good time. This is a still picture of the train station I left out of. And this is my first time packing up the bike like this, but it worked out well. And unsurprisingly, Brussels is pretty amazing. Really, just, just wow. Here we have a very well-preserved facade that's actually in the showroom of an art museum of sorts. And I couldn't come to Brussels without going to the comic book museum here. Uh, their museum has an impressive collection of comic book history. Their displays are very advanced, I suppose, for the medium. Uh, they explain a lot about how different comics explain story uh, and how narrative devices through uh, pictures work. And they have a lot of excellent work from any number of artists throughout the history of comics and a few large and interesting displays of, uh, of art from all sorts of different people. One of the floors was closed when I was here. This is the top floor. And as you can see, it's a little bit more avant-garde. That middle floor is closed though. They did give me a coupon to get back in later, which is nice. But I don't think I'm going to be here in six months whenever they open the middle floor, so... Maybe I'll just leave that on the table at the hostel. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. A bit of a look around at some of the more impressive museums. And just walking around the streets here is beautiful. I passed an Indian restaurant on the way here and I'm going back for it because it smelled amazing. Bit of an issue at the hostel, which led me to this. This is the Hotel Mozart. And if you are in Brussels, you have to go to this hotel. It is incredibly ornate and detailed. The art is amazing. It's surprisingly cheap. Uh, and the owner is super nice as well. Uh, they have these uh, very delicately and intricately carved walls and panels and ceiling and a large indoor garden courtyard type thing. The room was surprisingly spacious. It's just right there on the other side of the courtyard for me. And I can't say enough about this place. They saved me from uh, what could have been a bed bug issue at the hostel that I had been booked into. I thankfully got out of that before I unpacked anything. And just some more wonderful scenery. And here I am entering the Atom, the Atomata, the Atom. I can't exactly pronounce it correctly, but it is essentially the Eiffel Tower of Belgium. And the inside of this incredibly large structure is just this mixture of rooms of music and light shows. And I can't really explain it very well, so I'm leaving them in here. Enjoy.
let's have a nice hard cut to the Museum of Modern Art, in this case the plastics exhibit, which was actually surprisingly interesting. Plastic is not my favorite medium, but they seem to have every single item ever made out of plastic and Bakelite. Uh, everything from clothes to furniture, uh, household goods, computer casings, and how they all developed into a, I guess, modern understanding of plastics as a material. It was very thought-provoking, and I got a couple of ideas as a maker. Still not a big fan of plastic, though. And naturally, I had to come to the famous Sewer Museum. This is one of the only museums in the world where you actually get to walk down into some active sewer. This is not that. This is an example tunnel they built. I feel like I should be wearing my headlamp. And here we have the river. Can you tell? This is a section of the enclosed river. A good 20, 30 feet underground. And now we're in the sewers. And let me tell you, you're not missing the smell. It is profound. We're in something of a main artery here, but you can see the branching capillaries going off to homes and businesses in every direction. This was honestly a really impressive museum. I learned a ton about the sewer systems in this city uh, and their history, and if you happen to be in town, I can't recommend it enough. This, on the other hand, is also an impressive museum, but has nothing to do with the sewers, as you might be able to tell. These are the large format paintings, they're huge. and some smaller works as well. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Busy though, very busy. I've been in town for a couple days now. I just got dinner and I'm heading back to my hotel, the Hotel Mozart of course. Uh, it's been an amazing time in this city, bed bugs aside. And I'm heading to Ghent tomorrow. I accidentally ran into a little barbecue festival on my way to Ghent. Oh no, barbecue. So that barbecue festival was in the middle of a large sort of sculpture garden area that's also a concert venue. Well, I made it to Ghent. This is the Gravenstein, which of course I'm butchering the pronunciation of. An extremely famous castle for any number of reasons. And it is quite well preserved considering. Here we have the cellars and underground spaces, or at least part of them. It goes surprisingly deep. They have a bunch of museum pieces here. Medieval weapons and armory, furniture, you name it. And an excellent audio guide. Which is always nice. And the view from the roof of the Graven scene is also just lovely. The uh, the city looks beautiful from up here and also from down there, admittedly. It's just gorgeous out. These parapets represent the tallest part of the castle, which isn't as big as you might think. Absolutely beautiful stonework, of course flying buttresses supported by columns, and apparently these fireplaces are some of the first indoor fireplaces in the city or the country. And of course they have a torture chamber under the castle.
So I later walked into this area back here, uh, inside the mott, behind the castle, and then learned as I was leaving that you're not supposed to go back there. So I apologized to the groundskeepers who yelled at me. They didn't even have a sign or anything. I just sort of walked in. Surprisingly large. You can't get into all of it, but it's a big castle. I'm heading out of town tonight, back towards the ocean, of course. We'll just have to see where the road takes me. This is beautiful. Some more underground shots to finish up. Why not? 